Welcome to RJL Systems. Thank you for joining us in our commitment to accuracy. This is our technician level training. We will cover the indications for use, a brief background of body composition assessment in general, and proper BIA procedure encoding. Please note, the content of this slide deck is for informational purposes only. BIA technology is not intended to prevent, cure, diagnose, or treat any particular disease state, and BIA technology does not replace the educated judgment of a licensed healthcare professional. Our indications for use are cleared by the FDA and include the calculation and historical tracking of these measures listed here for your reference. Our intended population is normally healthy adults and adolescents from age 3 to 94. There are no known contraindications. However, the FDA continues to advise us to warn against the use of this device on any subject with an implanted electronic device such as a pacemaker or implantable cardioverter defibrillators. Many practitioners will also not use BIA during pregnancy. Why is accurate body composition assessment necessary? Weight loss is not always healthy, for example. We need to know which components of the body are changing. Is it the fat, the lean dry mass, the intracellular water, or some other component of the body? Evidence-based medicine requires evidence. In the same way that a CBC or a blood analysis tells us what is in the blood, a BIA tells us what is in the body weight. We are very proud that RJL BIA is used all over the world in integrated and preventative settings, lifestyle medicine practices, hospitals, university and military settings, the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, Cleveland Clinic, Harvard, Yale, Mayo Clinic, and more. Because our device is easily mobile, you will also see it in use in health fairs, chiropractic offices, gyms, fitness centers, and yoga centers. The small electrical current used in BIA reacts differently in the various compartments of the body. For example, the water, the fat, lean dry mass, and so on. There is a proper BIA protocol, and your job as the technician is to follow the protocol precisely. In the protocol section, we are going to discuss a sample permission form which you modify for the needs of your office and practitioner. Recommendations that you need to discuss with your physician, the optimal test preparation, how to make notations, and what a standardized BIA protocol will look like. Here you see the first half of the sample permission form which you and your practitioner will modify to meet the needs of your office. Here the patient will check off, sign and date, that they, for example, have removed their cell phone away from their body, they release liability, they are not pregnant, and that they understand the report should be shared and discussed with the physician. Here you see the other half, or the other side of your sample permission form. You and your practitioner will work together to devise a form that meets the needs of your office. Notice that you are asking information about the activity level of your patient. How many sessions per week? How many hours per session? What they do for an occupation? And the types of activities they utilize in a fitness session? This is all important for determining the activity level of the patient in an average 24-hour period of time. Refer to the manual that comes on your USB thumb drive in the kit for further definition. Most Americans will qualify for a very light activity level. Again, this is averaged over a 24-hour period of time. Here are issues you will want to discuss with your physician. Joint replacements. It is okay to use average range comparisons. However, if you needed to do the procedure on the opposite side of the body, make that notation. Limb replacements. 
It is not okay to use the average range comparisons. If you need to do the procedure on the opposite side of the body, make a notation. What you will notice is you are comparing qualitative comparisons over multiple visits of that individual only. In other words, an N of one type study. BIA is not typically recommended for pregnancy and not recommended for those with medical device implants. Please refer to the card that came with your device kit for the optimal BIA protocol preparation. No alcohol 24 hours prior to the test. No caffeine or exercise 4 hours prior. Please notate sauna or Bikram yoga, for example, within 24 hours. Have the patient drink two glasses of water two hours prior to the test and then empty the bladder and bowels prior to the analysis. If your patient varied from this preparation, for example, they are a new patient or you met them at a health fair, make a notation on the report for your practitioner in the space provided at the top of the page. In a standardized BIA protocol, the patient will remove the sock, stocking, shoe, jewelry, and any objects from the electrode sites. Remove any therapeutic magnets, cell phones, or other electronic devices and move them away from the body. It is very important to follow standardized BIA protocol. Your patient should be lying flat on his or her back, supine position, on a flat surface. This matches the American Medical Association definition, also for the CPT code. The knees are separated with the arms 30 degrees out from the waist with the palms down. If you have an obese patient, or perhaps a bodybuilder, who requires a pillow between the knees to keep the legs separated, please do so before beginning the test. Notice that the red wire set goes on the hand toward the head. One electrode goes on the imaginary line bisecting the ulnar head. The other electrode is placed on the first joint of the middle finger. On the foot, notice that the electrode is placed on the imaginary line bisecting the medial malleolus and also again on the base of the second toe. Again, notice that the red wires go on the hand toward the head. The red clips go toward the head on the wrist and on the ankle. Be sure that the four electrode sites are cleaned with alcohol prior to adhesive electrode attachment and allow that alcohol to dry. The patient should have been lying in the supine position about three to five minutes. This is about the amount of time that it will take for you to clean the electrode sites, apply the adhesive pads, and properly attach the device clips. This allows the fluids of the body to stabilize. The BIA device will give you two measures that you will need to record, a reactance and a resistance. Once the resistance and reactance data is accurately recorded, the procedure is complete. You may now remove and discard the adhesive electrodes. Electrodes are not reusable. Next, you will accurately record pertinent patient data. The name and or patient ID as directed by your practitioner. Height, weight, age, and gender will also need to be recorded. Notice in your software report options, you can override the target weight. If not, the software will fill this number in for you. Speak with your practitioner for guidance on this and any other optional overrides. Notate anything that would be out of the ordinary or useful information for your practitioner. For example, recent exercise, sauna, recent alcohol use, recent surgery, limb replacements, and so on. You can also add in any other lab biomarker information that you may have on the patient. For example, circumference information, hemoglobin A1c, the lipid panel results, blood pressure, and so on. Your reports can be stored or emailed as a PDF and then printed. You can also choose which tables and graphs that you would like to include in your report and whether or not you would like the food and fitness sections or the average ranges to print. You will notice that your software will default to the NHANES-3 general population equation. Most practitioners will utilize this equation set for almost all their patients. 
However, you do have the option, at your practitioner's discretion, to consider the athletic or obese equation sets and also the athletic set for the thin, fit, or skinny individual. We also have the new pediatric, which goes down to age 4. Please note that the RJL-BIA is in a supine position, as is defined by the American Medical Association. The CPT code 0358T is BIA whole body composition in the supine position with interpretation and report. Notice that the non-supine BIA methods, such as handheld or standing BIA methods, are not eligible for the American Medical Association 0358T CPT code. Non-supine BIA methods may have compromised accuracy due to unstable central venous pressure. The fluids of the body cannot stabilize unless the patient is lying supine. Calluses on the hands and feet, temperature and moisture variations on the palms of the hands and on the bottoms of the feet can all lead to compromised accuracy.